Attractions come and go at Disneyland, but one of the more famous and regrettable losses is the Skyway to Fantasyland, or Skyway to Tomorrowland, depending on where you board. And in this episode of Fresh Bake, we're going to give you a little bit about the secrets and history of this legendary attraction at Disneyland. The Skyway, built by the Von Roll Company of Switzerland, and the first of its kind in the United States, was an aerial tramway that transported guests high over Fantasyland and Tomorrowland in aluminum buckets. Incredibly, those aluminum buckets included seats for just two on patio chairs that were bolted to the floor of the bucket. Years later, Imagineer Bob Gurr redesigned the buckets with four seats instead of two, using lightweight ABS plastic and eliminated the center post, thus allowing the buckets to carry the weight of the two additional passengers. There were 42 buckets in all, along with 1,250 feet of cable supported by four towers. They first appeared at Disneyland on June 23, 1956, just a year after the park opened, and boasted exceptional angles and unique aerial views, according to promotional materials in the park. A one-way trip took three and a half minutes and reached its highest point of 60 feet over Holiday Hill. And for those who know their Disneyland history, Holiday Hill was the eventual site of Matterhorn Mountain. Part of the 1959 renovation of Tomorrowland that included the submarine voyage and motorboat crews, the Matterhorn's construction put it smack dab in the middle of the Skyway's path. But rather than reroute the Skyway, they just built the Matterhorn around the support post. It was a clever solution to the problem, but perhaps one that lacked foresight as it wound up being a contributing factor to the attraction's eventual closure. But at the time, the feature would become one of the more fascinating parts of the Skyway ride. Guests would travel right through the Matterhorn, giving them wonderful views of bobsleds racing through the mountain, along with those familiar roars of the Yeti. It's just about as Disney an experience as one can have, and it's one that I kind of miss not being able to have or remember having in my youth. There were two boarding stations, one each in Fantasyland and in Tomorrowland. The Fantasyland Chalet was Swiss-themed in honor of the Swiss manufacturing origins, while the Tomorrowland side had a more obvious futuristic feel. It's fascinating to see, much like a lot of Disneyland was in its early years, just how sparse the trees were at the time. The chalet, as we knew it most recently, was shrouded in trees, but in its day was almost completely visible in Fantasyland. Guests enjoyed the Skyway buckets until November 9th, 1994, when it closed for good. And part of the lore of the Skyway is the actual reasoning behind the closure. Disney attributed the closure to metal fatigue, stating that there were stress cracks on the Matterhorn Tower, and that the tower could not be repaired without significant impact made to the mountain. Others, though, believed it was due to safety concerns, which is understandable considering the closure was just seven months after guests had quote-unquote fallen out of a gondola and into a tree near the Alice in Wonderland attraction. But it turns out the 20-foot fall was more of a jump, and the guest eventually dropped his claim. The actual closure is more likely to be one of economics. It had a notoriously low capacity, and by mid-90s standards, and today as well, this was a huge issue. Meanwhile, there was a major new attraction opening in Frontierland, Indiana Jones Adventure, Temple of the Forbidden Eye. And according to Tony Baxter, there was a prevailing attitude in management that when something new opens up, something old should close, thus offsetting some of the operating costs. Now that isn't to say there still wasn't some concern over safety with respect to the now aged attraction. Jack Lundquist, the park's first president, was quoted as saying, I'm glad the Skyway closed. It was an accident waiting to happen. In spite of all this, there were actually plans to improve the attraction. They were going to bring it up to code, of which there was none when it opened. As, as we said before, it was the first of its kind in the US. And they were looking to create a new larger system, one with seats for six, with the enclosed gondolas and air conditioning or heat as needed and a new cable system that went around the Matterhorn. But again, economics intervened, I'm sure, as the ride capacity surely did not reconcile with all the additional costs needed for this upgrade. So the ride simply closed and the operating costs were transferred to the Indiana Jones attraction as suggested by Tony Baxter. As mentioned, over the years since its closure, the Swiss chalet in Fantasyland became shrouded among the growing trees to the point that it became Kind of a hidden curiosity. Guests in the know would say, look guys, up those steps and behind those trees is where the Skyway Chalet used to be. You can almost make out the Swiss theming on the windows. And this was because they never actually closed the chalet. Over 20 years later, the, the chalet remained. It was, it was sometimes considered 
a future location for a restaurant or a meet and greet. But these new plans never materialized and finally, after being vacant and abandoned for 22 years, the chalet was finally destroyed in 2016 at the hands of the Empire. The site of the Swiss chalet was finally co-opted by Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, though as of this writing there is still no indication as to how this space will be used. But today, these three steps are all that remain. But the passing of the attraction and the iconic Swiss chalet in Fantasyland is not the last we'll see of the Skyway. If you look closely, there are still some artifacts that can be seen today. You can find this planter in the queue for Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. This is where one of the four main towers sprouted from. But rather than simply cover it with concrete, it was repurposed, which is common for Disneyland, as was done for the old Monsanto House of the Future at the current site of Pixie Hollow. And while the Tomorrowland boarding location was quickly demolished after the attraction closed, this stairwell remains. It now goes nowhere, but at the time it was an emergency exit for the boarding site. And today, much like the Swiss Chalet of old, it is completely shrouded in trees. And finally, when the Matterhorn was refurbished in 2015, the scene previously remembering former Disney president Frank Wells was updated to include old Matterhorn bobsleds and some Skyway buckets. And so it is that the Skyway buckets have come and gone from Disneyland history. But if you're like me and you can squint just a little, you can still see those buckets traveling in the skies above as you walk through Fantasyland. You can still see them running through the Matterhorn Mountain and you can still see yourself walking up those steps to the Swiss Chalet. They're a memorable part of the Disneyland history, one I wish we still had today, and will always go hand in hand with those nostalgic memories we have of a park we grew up with. Well, thank you for watching everyone. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel and to share this and our other videos on Twitter and Facebook. And until next time, remember to love Disneyland every day and fresh bite.